Ooh, I'm tired. Did you think I was frozen? Probably not, you're used to this by now. Hello my friends, it's Nina, welcome back. Long time no see. I am too tired to wear makeup today. I'm also going to be honest, I don't remember the last time I wore makeup, I think it's been a week. I have been letting my skin heal, and honestly, it's been great. I was also watching a bunch of my older videos, and I was watching my Not Really Studying With Nina series. Boy, that was a great time. <laughs> so I decided I'm going to bring that back today. It has been almost a month of physical distancing, of being in self-quarantine, and I think I desperately need to start studying. In this episode of Not Really Studying with Nina, we're going to study Korean and we're going to try to be fluent in one day. I'm kidding. That's not humanly possible. But it's been a very long time since I've studied Korean properly. I am going to try to learn a lot today. Hopefully. I also don't know what my energy is capable of doing today. I have a nice coffee here. This is actually a nice Americano. I like having my espresso watered down. I also have some snacks as always. I have some nuts and then I also have an apple. This is the last fruit in this house. This is the final fruit. I am scared to go grocery shopping. Anywho, I have no idea what I'm going to study, but let's just roll with it. I have done a couple videos on how I study Korean, so this might be familiar to you guys. My methods haven't changed all that much. I think today I'm going to translate some lyrics maybe, or actually yes, I should translate some lyrics maybe. And then as I've mentioned before, I use howtostudykorean.com. That is the main website that I use. Not sponsored. I just use it. I actually don't know where to start. I am going to go into unit four. So on howtostudykorean.com, there's literally hundreds of lessons. And as you guys may know, I tend to hop around these lessons <laughs> instead of going in a chronological order. Not really the best method, but I'm just curious and I want to learn what I want to learn. As I am Korean, I have some familiarity with the language. And so I have the tendency to want to learn what I want to learn, but that's why I'm all over the place and that's why I'm still struggling. So on unit three, hold on to- Ooh, yes, wait. Wait, yes. Yes, wait. Oh, this might be it. Oh, yes. <gasps> wait, is this what I've heard before? Because when I listen to songs, of course, there will be words that pop up that I've never heard of, but it'll be my brain. Oh! Oh, I got it. Do I want to learn this? Yes, I want to finally get this over with. Lesson 67. Like, 처럼, as if, 는 두시, 두시. So this lesson is on like or as if. I'm already familiar with 처럼, obviously, because that's literally the easiest, one of the most common things that you could learn. But then there's also 는 두시. I have been hearing it often lately. An example is from AT's answer. In the lyrics, in literally the chorus, it says, 건배하자 like a thunder. The so I hear tushi a lot and I finally want to understand why they use it. In what situation do I need to use it? Of course, people use this in everyday language as well. Ooh, it's in euphoria. I'm trying to see if it's in other lyrics that I'm familiar with. The power of the internet, honestly. So tushi, tushi, tushi. Ooh. So something that I've mentioned before in the past is I like to write down lyrics and then translate it into my language, which is English. This is a good exercise for me to get my handwriting down and then also literally learn more things. It's a good, easy exercise, especially if you listen to a lot of Korean sung music. I don't know why I drink espresso when my body shakes easily. Okay, I feel like this lesson should be short. Also know that when you're taking notes, you don't have to copy everything down word for word. Just try to shorten it so that it's not overwhelming, so that when you actually study things make sense but it's also to the point i have a giant notebook this time i used to have one of those really thin small notebooks but i have this hundred something page notebook honestly a great change there is a lot that i want to learn so we're gonna go for it lesson 67 wow i haven't done this in so long there's a lot of vocabulary usually i like to copy the vocabulary but i don't know if i have time for that right now pop pop Waterfall. Ah, that reminds me. There is a tip that I have mentioned in the past where I write down words that I hear onto a post-it or maybe your notes app on your phone, but I, of course, like to write things down with my hands. If I hear a word that captures my attention, I will write it down. This is kind of like a word bank. I write down the word in Korean and then I translate it. And then once the post-it is full, I will rip it off and then stick it 
somewhere where I can see it. That's just another tip that I have. Now let's see. So I already know what chrom means. I don't know if I need to write that down. I can at least write down like the differences because that's good for my brain to know because sometimes there are grammar structures that when you use it in a wrong situation, it won't make sense or it'll be awkward. So I do want to make sure that I use these grammar structures in appropriate times. Like sometimes a certain grammar structure, when you translate it, it might make sense, but in a situation, it's probably not the commonly used form. So when chum is attached to a noun, it indicates that an action is done like the way the specified noun does it. By describing to she with a clause using the got, you can treat the meaning of as if. I never heard that word before. We are starting a word bank. My Korean viewers are probably looking at me like, I know that word. Must be nice. Ah, hengdong literally means to act, like acting a certain way. Okay, I definitely need that word actually. Literally, the only word for act that I know is. Oh, I forgot it. It's like yong, yong, yongha, yong. I can't believe I forgot it. Hold on. It's yongi yotseo, yongi yotseo. So that's the word that I thought I knew. Okay, so hengdong hada is another word for to act, but yongi is more like acting, like a performance kind of acting. I'll write both down because I can't believe I forgot that word. Ah, uh, yongi is a noun. Yongi is acting, not performance. And hengdong hada is an actual verb. Cool, cool. I'm learning so much right now. By the time I come out of this quarantine, I'm going to be fluent. I couldn't even finish this in. Is anyone else learning a language or doing something new at this time. Good. And if you said no, then you should probably get on that. Learning is good for you. So I'm going to write some full examples. What a long sentence. Wow, my brain is so full right now. Head empty? No, head full. And then I'm going to write the translation. Is there anything else I really need to know? I'm going to look back at the lyrics that I found this word in. I become happy as if I can't breathe. I'm assuming. Yes, I got that right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've literally listened to the song since it came out, but I never had the proper time to learn all the lyrics. I only ever learned the chorus. But the more you know, Yes. I definitely want to translate all of Euphoria. I feel like there are a lot of words that I would like to know, even though the chorus is literally all in English. But because that's going to take a lot of time, I'm going to do that later. For now, I'm going to write the title just so I can get back to that. So Euphoria by BTS. And then I also do want to translate AT's answer because that's where I got the grammar structure from. Of course, you hear it everywhere, but that's where I remember it from because it's literally in the chorus. Convehaja like a thunder, ni modun go chewa, nam chowru do shi. You wanna go chewa, nam chowru do shi. I want a nut. I want a nut. Wow. Cashews are delicious. Nuts are a great source of energy. Unless you have an allergy, then please do not eat nuts. So I think that's pretty much the end of that list. Then maybe I might be able to move on to another. What is another thing I'm curious about? There's just a lot of vocabulary that I don't know. I recognize a lot of grammar just because I study a lot of grammar, but there's just a lot of words in between that I don't know. Learning vocabulary for a language is also very important. Pakja? Pakja moji? Uh, I'm looking at the lyrics for Zero O'Clock by BTS. That's a song I've been loving. That song is getting me through hard times. Pakcha is beat. 
did not know that. Pacta equals beat, like a music beat. Interesting. I definitely want to translate zero o'clock when I can. <laughs> There's a lot of lyrics that I want to translate. I actually recognize a lot of these lessons. That's good. Unit two is pretty solid. That's nice. <laughs> it makes me feel happy that I actually know something. <laughs> I'm trying to find something that I am not familiar with. I'm going to go to unit four. Oh, <laughs> I think my problem is I don't know enough vocabulary. I'm looking at the grammar. I know and recognize a lot of these. I'm trying to find one that I don't know that well. I'm going to eat an apple. I need something sweet. Jamaja. Jamaja. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, this is interesting. Okay. That is also a structure that I hear a lot, but I need to know better. Jamaja. I always get jamaja confused with taga. Taga. Kadaga. 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 I had to change the battery. Taga. What's taga? Kadaga. Kadaga. I feel like that's yoki kadaga. I feel like that means after? Why do I know that? Kadaga. Where did that come from? Kadaga. Taga. Hadaga. Kadaga. Taga grammar. Where are you at? Lesson 88. Many meanings of taga. Okay. <laughs> for one action to halt and for another action to begin. Oh, what a delicious apple. Hakusengi yoshimi kungu hadaga chami turasaya. Yeah, okay. The end result of completing that action is often stated in the upcoming clause. Wow, this apple's really good. <laughs> itaga. Ah, itaga, that's a word that I know. Chokim itaga. And you're gonna be happy. I'm trying. So adding taga, it means to do something after something. I'm gonna write the lesson. Lesson 88. I'm literally just summarizing these things. I don't think I need to write a whole page of notes for these things. To do something after something or while or to add to. I told you guys this is an intense study Korean with me. I'm trying to fit in as much as possible. <laughs> Tamaja. Let's do it. Lesson 84 as soon as. This is actually one of the easiest grammatical principles to learn understand especially because you have had tons of practice with learning new grammar by now by attaching tamaja to a verb at the end of a clause the speaker indicates that an action occurs as soon as another action does very simple very straightforward thank you as soon as we arrive home i need to eat yes what can i say I need to pee, so as soon as I'm done filming, I need to go to the bathroom. I think when you're learning a language, it's important to speak out loud when you're reading examples, when you're just learning something. Just speak out loud. Let your mouth practice speaking in another language. It's all about muscle memory, being comfortable, actually practicing. Ah, talking about vocabulary, another thing, I don't know if I've mentioned this in a video before, but another thing that I used to use a lot was a flashcard app. I have Quizlet, for example. I write down literally long lists of any vocabulary. And then with the function of a flashcard app, they work like flashcards. I think it's pretty efficient than having hundreds of flashcards, but also physical flashcards are helpful as well. But just having that much vocabulary, I think having an app is just easier. Okay, moving on. I can X out of this tab, X out of that tab. Ooh, I think this might be my final lesson that I'll look at. There has been a grammar structure that I want to learn. It's torok. Torok? Like, hi sweet torok. I'm going to finally look at this just because I hear it often. If I can understand this grammar structure, it will be helpful. All of the sentences with torok have a common theme. Torok causes some situation to occur. I went to bed early last night in order to get up early in the morning. Mm -hmm. In order to get up early. In order to get up early in the morning. That's what I'm that's what I hear a lot, so So that's what I hear a lot. Basically Torok means in order to. And we say that a lot in sentences, so it's important that I learn this. This meaning of torog is very commonly seen in signs around Korea. Cool. I'm going to just write some examples. I think this is pretty straightforward though. So there are multiple translations. Translation one, so that in order to. Translation two, I will, I will be sure to. Ooh, 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 I say that a lot. Be sure to is translation three. Cookie sagakyung, that's a square. Sagakyung moyangi 
되도록 크기를 사각형 모양이 되도록 만들어 주세요. Ooh. Okay, so it has multiple meaning. Oh, I'm going to need a lot more space. I'm going to write down all the translations. I need to go to the other side of the page for this one. There's a lot of translations that's actually very helpful. I'm going to turn the page. There are a lot of translations, so I'm going to write them all down and put one example or two for each translation. So, 도록 and 개 can be used interchangeably. So, instead of 할수 있도록, you can say 할수 있게, which is what I'm familiar with. But in formal writing and in signs, you'll see 도록. So, I guess it's just good to be familiar. Oh, that makes sense. 내일까지 하도록 하겠습니다. Y'all, this caffeine is making me power through. I've never learned this much in one sitting. I will do it by tomorrow. Bye together. 제가 지금부터 열심히 일하도록 할게요. 지난 경기를 안타깝게, 안타깝게, 안타깝게 비겨서 이번에 꼭 이기도록 할 거예요. Oh, oh. I see. What does antakapke mean? Antakapke. Unfortunately. Ooh. Ooh, yes. I never even questioned what unfortunately is in Korean. Oh, wait. I do know a different word. No, that's not really. It's not really the same meaning. It's. I know ashitke. Antakapke equals unfortunately. Ashitjiman. Ashitke. Oh, okay. So ashitke is like unfortunately, regretfully. There's another word. Pudding. Pudding again? Pudding? Pudding? That's another word. I hate synonyms. Pudding. There are so many, so many words for unfortunately. That is so unfortunate. I'm going to write them all down. How do you actually pronounce it? Pudding? Pudding? Pudding. Pudding again. Pudding. This study session is so intense, bro. Y'all, look at this word bank. I'm so proud of myself. So back to the lesson. Translation three. Be sure to. So as I said, 쿠키를 사각형 모양이 되도록 만들어 주세요. Yes. Good job, Nina. Woo. Cookie. Be sure to make the cookies into a triangle shape. Triangle shape. Triangle is 삼각형, right? Am I wrong? No, I'm not. No, no. Don't tell me I'm wrong. 삼각형. Boy, it's a rectangle. I was right. So that means four. Why are they telling me to make it in a triangle? I detected a typo. So the sentence said 삼각형, but then the translation said triangle. Look at my brain working. Look at my feet down, down. Be sure to make the cookies into rectangles. I guess it's not really technically a square. It could be just a quadrilateral. The more you know. So 사각형 is a rectangle and then 삼각형 is a triangle. Because I remember in Korea, we had a lot of 삼각김밥. I can technically make it at home, but it just hit different when it was at a Korean convenience store. Translation four, to make, to force. Wow, 도록 has a lot of meanings. This was definitely an important lesson to cover. It is possible to use 도록 to refer to a command that was given. Oh no, I forgot to make a thumbnail. I need to make a thumbnail before the sun goes down. Okay, I did my thumbnail. Okay, we're almost there, you guys. 부모님이 제가 대학교에 진학하도록 강요하셨어요. 진학하, 진학하다, 진학하다, 진학하다. Never heard that word before. 진학하다. Go to school. I heard tanida. I didn't hear chinakada. Kangyada. That's another word that I need to look up. Ah, kangyada means to force. I'm gonna write the translation. Next, translation five. To the point of, to the extent of, can be used to indicate that one does an action to a certain extent. This style of sentence is often used as a metaphor to indicate that one does something to some metaphoric extreme. 제가 죽도록 당신을 사랑할 What? 제가 죽도록 당신을 사랑할 거예요. I will love to the point that I will die. Okay. I mean, it is good to love though, but don't die, please. 제가 죽도록 당신을 사랑할 거예요. I want what they have. And I think that is it for this lesson. We completed a front and back of one page. Yes. 
I looked through one, two, three, four lessons. I am going to place this sticky note into these notes. Here we have our notes. Isn't she pretty? Very to the point. Perfect. Look at us. We really did that. I unfortunately did not get to do any lyrics, but that's just something that I like to do for fun. But that is going to be it for the study session. This was definitely a real studying with Nina. My brain is full. She is well fed. I had a good time doing this. I missed studying. It's definitely a good way to pass time while making yourself a more knowledgeable person. I hope you had a good time studying with me. I hope maybe I was a good study buddy. I hope you guys are hanging in there and staying safe, staying healthy. Thank you for watching and for being here as always and I will see you in my next video. Let's bring it in. Goodbye my friends.